Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at performing one more LU factorization. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this matrix A and I'm gonna decompose it into the product of these two matrices. So this will be a follow-up to the other video. Um, so I will go through this one a little bit faster. So again, a factorization, we're just breaking up um, a matrix into a product of two or more matrices. And there we have our process. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with our matrix and we're going to try to put this in echelon form. So let me try to do that. And again, I'm going to go through this one a little faster. As we do this, we will also, um, this is, we're going to manipulate this matrix to produce our matrix. Eventually, we're going to get our matrix U out of this, but we're going to use this to also help produce our matrix L. Okay, so the first thing I do is I'm going to look at this first column. So to get it in echelon form, I want to get zeros beneath that top left entry of a 2. So I'm going to have to do a few things. It looks like I could take 2 times uh, row 1 and add that to row 2 to get my new row 2. So let me go through this. So the first row I'm going to leave alone. 2, 4, negative 1, 5, and negative 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 4. That's going to leave me with 0. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 5. That's going to be 3. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus uh, 3. That's going to be equal to 1. And then um, 2 times 5 is 10 minus 8. That's going to be 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1 is going to be negative 3. So it looks like we could also just do negative. Um, so I want to get a zero in the third row, first column. So I could take negative the first row and add to that the third row to get my new third row. And you can check my arithmetic here. I got this to be zero, negative nine, negative three, negative four, and 10. Those aren't too bad. Last but not least, we could take three times the first row and add to that the fourth row to get my fourth row. And again, you can check my arithmetic. I got 0, 12, 4, 12, and negative 5. Okay, so at this point, what do we do? Well, we're going to keep going because we still want to put this in echelon form. But again, if I want to, I can start working on this matrix L. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll just build this up as we go along. Now, what we do is we look at that first column of entries. We look at this first column uh, of entries that we had, and we don't just drop those in there, right? Because we need, we're going to need ones along the diagonals. So what we saw, the way to make the procedure work is we're going to take that entry that would fall along the main diagonal, which in this case we would have a 2. If I were just to, again, if I were to just drop this in there, my 2 would be laying along the main diagonal. I don't want a 2. I want a 1. Well, I could take every number in that, uh, that column and divide by 2. That's going to be the values that we put in there. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and negative 6 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 3. Okay, <clears throat> so now we just keep doing this. We just keep trying to put this matrix into echelon form. So, okay, if I do that, I'm just going to play this game again. I'm going to look at this entry of a 3. I'm going to look at the values below it. I want to get zeros be beneath it. So to do that, it looks like we could take 3 times the second row and add to that my third row to get my new third row. So I'm going to, again, just copy down my matrix. I'll leave the first row alone, 2, 4, uh, negative 1, 5, and negative 2. I'm going to leave the second row alone as well. I'm going to perform that uh, row operation. You can check my arithmetic again. Uh, when I did this, I got this to be 0, 0, 0, 2, and 1. And it looks like to get the bottom entry um, also to be a zero, it looks like we could take negative four times the second row and add to that the fourth row to get my new fourth row. So maybe I'll go through this one <clears throat> a little bit uh, slower just to make sense out of it. So these would clearly be zero. So negative four times three is negative 12 plus 12. That's going to be zero. Negative four times one is negative four plus four. Again, that's zero. That's nice. Uh, negative four times two is negative eight plus 12. That's going to be four. 
And then we would have negative 4 times negative 3. That's 12. 12 minus 5 is going to leave me with 7. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing we did. We were working on uh, these entries. Well, I don't want the 3. Um, I don't want to put a 3 here because, again, that's not going to be a 1. So I want this value to be a 1. <clears throat> so we'll simply divide everything in that column by a 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. 12 divided by 3 is going to be 4. And we've seen that above that, we simply put a 0. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. I think we just have one more thing to do. So now if I try to keep putting in echelon form, I'm going to look at these values of 2 and 4. I want to get a 0 beneath that 2. So I could simply take negative 2 times the third row and add to that my fourth row to get my new fourth row. And if we do that, we'll leave the first row alone. 2, 4, negative 1, 5, negative 2. We've got 0, 3, 1, 2, negative 3. We've got 0, 0, 0, 2, and 1. And now if we perform this operation, if we perform this row operation, notice we would just get 0, 0, 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 2 plus 4 is going to be 0. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus uh, 7 is going to be 5. And I think we're getting very close. So again, if I look at these values, 2 and 4, that's not going to be what I drop into... That's not going to be what I drop into my matrix L. We'll do the same thing as previously for this one. Again, we could divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And again, we put zeros above it. <clears throat> Once we get down to the bottom right corner, okay, so there's really nothing to do. We don't have to, like, get zeros beneath it because there's nothing beneath it. But again, the same thing, though. I don't want to just drop a 5 into that bottom left corner. So I would simply have to divide that by 5. Basically, whatever the bottom right entry is, just make it into a 1. Um, and then we'll put zeros above it. And now we are in business. This is going to be our matrix U. And we've now got our matrix L. And we have completed the process. So let me just put these down here. So here's matrix U. Let me erase all this stuff. Excuse me, there's matrix L, rather. So that's matrix L. We've got matrix U here. Let me try to clean this one up a little bit. So we'll make this one look a little nicer. So what do we have? We had negative 2, negative 3, 1, and 5. And just like before, um, if you want to verify, <clears throat> you can show. You can show that if we take L times U, you will, in fact, get that matrix A back that we started with. So that's the idea of our LU factorizations. Of course, you can do lots of things with this. What can we do with it? Well, in another video, I'll look at an application of using these LU uh, factorizations in, in circuit design.